But you know, this, is... this issue, because th th there are problems all the way around. Uh, number one, to me, uh, is how you frame the discussion. Quite often in this society, the way this, this whole issue Ron just brought up about the, the brother and the cop and the this and the that, generally, but for instance, I don't think, and I kind of said this on Bashir's program the other time, but you know, on the radio, what, was two weeks ago? Mm -hmm. When yep. Marimba and I were on the radio. I don't see a cop's life being any more precious than anybody else's life. Right. That's number one. You chose to do that job. You know what the perks of doing that job was, that you can bully people around and do what the fuck, oh, I'm sorry. I shouldn't be saying that on camera. Doing what you want to do, as well as other things that you get from that job. So you know what you were doing. It's mm -hmm. not like, they, they have framed the issue as if these people are out there protecting us and doing all of this stuff, as if it was altruistic. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just volunteered to get, get out here and protect or oh, whatever the thing may be. Now back to this thing about race and culture. Uh, what is the context for me? What is the context in which this discussion is occurring? To me, the context is racism in the form of white supremacy. All right, that's the context in which this discussion of race and other things. Now somebody else can frame it differently. That's how I'm framing it, mm -hmm. and you've seen me do this a lot of times. Now. In terms of that, if we go back to, and we don't even have to agree with this, if we go back to Dr. Clark and other people, uh, going all the way back to 1850 with Blyden, who said basically the same thing before Garvey said it. Now remember, Blyden was born in 1832, mm. you know? Garvey was born in 1887, and Garvey read Blyden, Du Bois read Blyden, Booker T read Blyden. Remember, before Booker T died, he was corresponding with Blyden. Mm. You know, Blyden saw the whole picture mm. in terms of what he called African redemption and liberation. Now, this issue, the context, all right, whether or not we can unify racially within a racial context or culturally within a racial context, because as you pointed out, even if we look at Diop's book, and we can have problems with that, the cultural unity of Africa, mm -hmm. all right? He's saying that with all of these different cultures, there's a cultural unifying force that crosses, you know, goes across these cultures. Jomo Yo, jo Kenyatta said ba ba basically the same thing in Facing Mount Kenya. Mm -hmm. Remember reading Facing Mount Kenya? I know you read it, okay. all right? Basically the same thing. Pan-Africanism or perish. Now, under this context, as I pointed out on in the, in the thing the other day, there's an event horizon mm. for us, you know, as far as I can see. Once we get past that event horizon, I don't think there's anything we do because we're going to be so far behind technologically and in other ways. If we don't unify and cannot unify with all of the different problems that we have, even in terms of the identification with, with who we have, all may be lost. Culturally, you have exactly the same kind of problem because within the cultural context, you're gonna have people within that who are Muslims, who are this and who are that, and who will say, I'm loyal to Islam, I'm not loyal to African people, I'm loyal to Jehovah's Witness, I'm lo loyal to Charles Taze Russell. With that, for me, and again, I don't care who disagrees, and I'm gonna argue this with both of y'all right now, if y'all want Oh, we gonna argue. Okay, <laughs> for me, for me, if we don't find a unifying point, whether it's racial within the context of raci racism and white supremacy, or whether it's gonna be cultural, as far as I'm concerned, all is lost. Mm -hmm. See, you know, yeah. see, yeah. They